recorded live from inside a caravan storage compound. This is the Caravan Coffee and Cake Podcast. Now, let's join our hosts, John Feeney, Andy Morley, and Dan Trudgeon. Hi, everybody. Welcome back uh, to episode number five of the Caravan Coffee and Cake Podcast. You got your boy Danny T here on the mic, and you got JF on the wheels of steel coming soon to a leisure centre near you. Hey there, guys. Good to see you. I've just, I've just redone my screen so I can now see you. Okay. What have you got on your head? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, some of our podcast listeners, viewers may or may not be aware that, uh, when was it? It was a week ago on Friday just past. This is Bank Holiday Monday we're recording this. I shaved my hair off uh, for charity. So I've got a hat on because, um, shall I take it off? Oh, yeah. I think the, uh, the phrase is... I think the get your forehead out for the lads. Go on. <laughs> Hang on. Wow. So and give us a bit of an exclusive here, Andy. How, how were you on the build up to your to your colossal head shave? Um, I was pretty nervous actually, but uh, it was I was nervous because I'd not done um, not done a live stream for for a long, long time, and and that was the that was the thing that I was nervous about about. We'd, we'd set up the page, um, the Just Giving page. Uh, there will be a link in the description if uh, if you want to donate. Um, and people, and I think we were about four or five hundred quid, something like that, during the recording. Um, and I thought, if we have a technical hitch here, and and it and it goes, it goes pee tongue. It's not going to be very good. So I was quite anxious about that. Um, but it went all right in the in the end. I wasn't too bothered about the the shaving bit. Kate was I remember, quite nervous. I, I, I remember asking you for Tora Fest of last year. I remember asking you, Andy, will you shave your head with me if we raise money for, for cash? And you said, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> and here you I are. Don't know, you know, the, the, time just, the time just seemed right. And, and yeah, I'm going to be at home, as we all are, you know, for quite a long time. Um you know, even still, and uh, and that's that. That was the reason why before I've never, you see, I've never had facial hair, and I've, I'm sporting a, a goatee. I've never had facial hair because I can't. I don't grow hair on my cheeks. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> so I could never have a beard. Um, but it's anyway. amazing how different you really do look. I mean, you know, when you used to have your clean shut, look, clean shaved looks, and your spiky hair. You know, I'll be honest with you, I had a bit of a man crush on you. <laughs> now, I feel utterly threatened by you, so, you know. It's funny, though, because some people have said, oh, it's it's taken 10 years off you. I'm like, really? 10 years? What, 12? <laughs> <laughs> it's taken 10 years off you. I'm like, oh, OK, fair enough. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure whether I, it's, it's starting to... I've got a scar here, which is why it's a bit lighter. Um, do you like it? Do, do you like it? Hmm... I think it's still a bit short. Now you can actually see that I've got hair because it's obviously a bit longer. Um, in another week, I'll decide whether I like it or not. And if I do, then I might just keep it at that length for a while. I don't know. It's yeah. So what? So some of our listeners may not be aware that there's another channel uh, that you nominated him um, afterwards, yeah. and he he took it seriously because we all thought <laughs> there's no way Damien would do it. And no. we all thought, no, absolutely not. And I phoned him up, FaceTimed him almost immediately after you stopped your live transmission. I said, oh, brilliant. So you're doing it then. That's excellent. I'll go and tweet it now. And I hung up on him before he had a chance to say no, Dan. And anyway, that was an off the cuff. That was an off the cuff comment that I saw, you know, flash of. And anyone who's done a live stream and, and obviously a lot of the people that listen and watch you know, this this video and listen to this may never have done. But when you are live and you've got it on your phone, because we were doing it on the phone mm. rather than in any other yeah. means, it does scroll through quite quick. So we have a laptop at the side that allows us to look at the comments and scroll back. But there's about a 20 second time delay on that. So, which is why sometimes it can come across as being disjointed. So I saw that comment come up, I think it was by you. And I thought, oh, I'll just say it anyway. He's not going to do it. I, I didn't mean for it to <laughs> <laughs> for it to actually happen. And he sort of picked the ball up and ran with it. So, 
It's excellent. Well, he's had his, his shaved and the girls shaved it and it just looked like, well, it looked horrendous to start with. <laughs> so Kelly had to uh, wade in there and sort it out, but he really likes it and Kelly really likes it. So I think his shaved head is a thing of the future. So If um, you're going to go, go bold. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, anyway, so how much have you raised so far then, Andy, on your Just Giving page? So just refreshing now, uh, we're at £970, which is wow. just unbelievable. I mean, I put I, I put a target of 1000 thinking, you know, pitch high and, and you know, see, see where you get to. I, I genuinely didn't think we'd get anywhere near that. So I'm absolutely delighted. Thanks again to everybody that has donated. If you want to donate, there's a link in the show notes description below whatever you want to call it um and also to to damien's as well definitely um, definitely because and, it, and uh, it was all in aid of supporting nhs staff and volunteers caring for covid19 patients and who knows what may happen in the near future oh mr t if i'm going to do it it's going big i really? think well i think if you if you're going to do it do it i right, mean right. it's one i, I can't <laughs> Let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't but Damien nominate you as well? He did. And I even commented in the, 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 the live chat that was going on. I was like, Damien, why have you, why have you nominated me? I don't have hair. <laughs> he also, uh, he also uh, nominated Ian as well from um, For the Love of Caravans. Oh, did he? I think so, Ian. yeah. I think yeah, Ian yeah, yeah. Is, 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 almost, is, is almost as follically challenged as you, John. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear, anyway, so uh, here we are. We are still mm. in lockdown. Should we give some visual a representation to the camera of lockdown? <laughs> I don't know if I've just sworn there in some country. Or, yeah, we on the lockdown, we yo. We on the lockdown, man. <laughs> uh, how, um, how is everybody's cabin fever doing? It's getting hard. I've got to be honest. I mean, I spoke to you earlier uh, about, and you said, look, should we just postpone it? And I said, I was just, I was not. Today has probably been the first down day, if I'm being honest. Um, yeah. And we've, what have we been, what, three weeks? I thought it was a month. I was saying to you earlier, I was like, yeah, it's been a month, isn't it? It's like, no, it's three weeks. It's like, oh, it feels longer. Yeah. yeah and um, yeah, today I've, I, I, I won't be around a bus. I've been a bit down today and I've been a bit grumpy. And I don't know, what can you say? It's, we're all in the same boat together. We can't go out. We can't see your family. We, we do a lot of this and, and we yeah. Skype call family, friends. And uh, my, my stepdad, he, he's desperate to come around and see us. And it's like we, we can't do anything. And it's, it's, it's really... It, it really is putting a strain on on families and and individuals, and it's at this time where we've all got to be mentally strong, and um, it, we will come through this eventually. We will come mm. through it. You um, boys both know that uh, obviously because you were there picking up the pieces for me. Uh, my bad time was last weekend or maybe the weekend before. I was really yeah. feeling it, um, and um, you know, and I've got to say a big thank you for, to you two because you both brought me through it because you just talked to me and just mm. cheered me up and you know got me focusing not did on the downs. Did we send you rude pictures? Yeah, I think you did actually. <laughs> yeah, um, but but actually, usually works. <laughs> but actually, you know, Andy just did the great thing which all parents do, which is just distract you away from what you're currently going through and just mm. got your attention on something else. Yeah, it's interesting. I think the, I think when we come out of this, and and you know, every year they 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 talk about or you hear about words that have been used a lot in that year. Mm. Have you ever come across that? Or yeah, or, yeah. 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 I think the one for 2020 is going to be unprecedented, without yeah. a doubt. <laughs> now, have you, now, boys, have you started playing unprecedented bingo? No. No. Every time you hear unprecedented, you give yourself a point. Ooh. Four points make a pint, eight points make a short. Well, the other <laughs> night, I went through two bottles of gin, a crate of lager, and I finished off with a little bit of tequila. <laughs> and that was just listening to the BBC News. I was going to say, I was just about to say, that's BBC. <laughs> the alcohol consumption in this house and the amount of food we've eaten out of the yep. fridge over the past three weeks it can only be described as unprecedented. Totally agree. <laughs> Unbelievable. I mean, I'm sat here tonight with a, with a, I'd like to say a little gin, 
But I mean, this was brimmed by Mrs. T earlier on. That, that is quite an impressive. I think, Andy, I don't know if, if you're the same as me, but four, four days, at least four days of the week, I do not drink because I'm out at work and I'm driving. I just don't yeah. drink during the week. And it's, I've found that, like Dan just said, it's like, um, what shall I do this afternoon? Ooh, shall I have a beer? <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> we, were, we were a bit the same. And we, well, yeah, like you, I try not to drink during the week. Um, certainly, you know, with work, but of course, mm. in this weird time that we've got of home working and, and not needing to drive anywhere, I mean, I don't. I was thinking, <laughs> I don't think I have driven so little in a four-week mm. period yep. ever since I passed my test than I have in this last four weeks. It's right. it's just I, I went out, I had to go out um, last week in the car, and I was thinking, bloody hell, this this feels weird. <laughs> <laughs> this feels strange. <laughs> <laughs> How many it's... of you are now uh, social distancing when you're driving as well now? <laughs> <laughs> Keeping that that distance between you and the car in front. Well, I, I went case. out on um, I went out on the push bike earlier um, for a little cycle round, and it I've never seen the roads as quiet as mm. as they were. I tell um, you what, that's to say, I, a similar thread is what I'm enjoying is is letting the dog out at night and listening. I don't know. I might mention this. Yeah, 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 yeah it's yeah, so yeah. quiet. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's it's just bizarre. I think I want to go back to what you were saying, you know, before about about finding it hard and difficult and stuff. And and I had a I had a call with my dad yesterday just to see how he was getting on and stuff. And he's in his seventies, early seventies, and uh, and I said, mate, I said, look, for me, the so social distancing and and our setup here currently i'm not finding that difficult i remember watching a thing weeks ago uh about a lady from italy and she was saying the thing i miss most is being able to hug people mm. and and actually i just want to i just want to hug my family that's mm. the thing i do mm. really want to you know obviously my you know my brother and my sisters and my parents and stuff and and that's and that's the thing that i miss that 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 touch mm. um but that intimacy of people i, I get yeah. that i mean you, you know, know I'm, I'm a hugger i love hugging people yeah mm. uh, i'm able to occupy myself during the day and, and i have a fairly strict morning routine and stuff <laughs> <laughs> and... <laughs> Sorry, i couldn't resist I, uh, I will always lower the tone whenever no. possible <laughs> no and I've just read the comment about Andy and Pornhub just from the last episode. So, I mean, that, fair play, Andy. <laughs> wow. You really um, are quite open about this, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> but, but I think to, to sort of occupy ourselves and, and get on with stuff, to keep your mind active and, and doing something, getting up and saying, right, what are we going to do today? What's the mm. big goal that we yeah. want to achieve? Um, get and... dressed. <laughs> 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 um, so let, let me ask you the question then so uh, let's let's ask let's put this actually into what you've been doing what new thing have you been doing whilst you've been in isolation oh i think mm. you put us on the spot there i mean i've i've cleaned and polished kate's car <laughs> on saturday <laughs> i mean Blimey. that never ever i've polished a car i've not polished a car for years and i've done a shit job of it i'll be honest <laughs> <laughs> I, I, can I just say, thank God for Disney Plus. We have literally done the entire Disney back catalogue. Marvel, <laughs> I, I could tell you everything about every Marvel film now, um, and National Geographic. Yeah, we, we, and Netflix has been an absolute godsend. Mm. Have you started Shooter? Oh, done Shooter. Yeah, we've You've done, done it. Done it. Yeah, uh, yeah, we've done that months ago. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, piss on your bonfire. Sorry, mate. <laughs> You're so behind the times, Andy. <laughs> so we've realised then that uh, Andy's really, you know, tried to enlighten himself and make him a better person by reading more and taking more culture. John's just watched more TV. Mm, yeah. And I've just moaned more. <laughs> <laughs> so today, um, today Kate has been shopping. And I said to her, I said, um, you know, we're recording a podcast tonight um, and... I I need I need some more ground coffee. Could you get me some more? You know, could you pick me some up? She says, yeah, yeah, no problem. Anyway, she comes back. She said, oh, I got you a coffee. Let me open the bag. This is what she's. What is it is called Grumpy Mule. 
Is it um, turbo caffeinated? Well, it says it will kick you this hard, and it is four <laughs> out of five lightning bolts. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> <laughs> have you had one yet? Or I, have you I had have. one you you yesterday and he's still going? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought I'd better try it. And actually it's very nice. It does say to load it up with two uh, dessert spoonfuls for one person. And I thought, I normally have one. You know, I've got a single cafetiere. Um, and I thought, two, jeez. It's good. But it's actually very nice. It's really nice. A single cafetiere? Yeah. I do notice, Andy, you keep yeah. still playing with yeah. your beard. Some, <laughs> <You're guilty>. some... <laughs> he's, he's, he's chin strokingly good. Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> can, I just ask, can I just ask about Kate? Because uh, Kate's going to be on um, the audio only segment, The Vlogger's Wives, later on. She is. But uh, I'm just going to ask you uh, how does Kate feel about the, um, the, the hair? She actually quite likes it, actually. Which she bit? The it. top bit or the, gro gro the groaty bit? Well, she told me I'd got to keep this. Uh, she, said, you, you've, you've got to... <laughs> she said you have got said you've got to keep that because I've got a I've got a tiny head and uh you'll she said you've got to, you've got to have some facial hair. So that's the only reason why I've really kept this. And it's been itchy, it's been itchy. I've never grown a beard before and it's just been itchy, itchy and actually I've got through the itching stage now. So It's not because both of you have been watching Prison Break and um, you know <laughs> Right, so look, we've just had a quick reset because uh, we needed to change batteries and cameras. John needed to go to the little boys' room and I needed to get another gin and tonic. Now, I could lie and say I went down to the kitchen and got this myself or I just shouted out, Angela! And... Grab me another gin and tonic! <laughs> and um, yeah, anyway, she's delivered another fine gin and tonic. And I'll be honest with you, two of these boys and I am mullered. <laughs> Which one is it? This is the Brecon gin as supplied Ooh. by uh, Mummy Jan Bam. Uh, which is an absolutely slunking. Can you remember at Trudge Fest a couple of years ago we were drinking it neat out of the bottle at 8.30 in the morning? No. <laughs> oh, that's maybe Just why. me then, was it? <laughs> <laughs> right, so before we change the batteries over, we were talking about the tweet that you sent out saying, yes. give us a shout out. A shout out. A shout out. So, a shout out. If anybody who's watched any of Joe Wick's videos will be, shout out, shout, shout out. out. So we've put a tweet out uh, this evening. We're recording this one, obviously, on Monday, the 13th of April. Uh, I put a tweet out at 7.03 p.m. And I just asked people to reply to it. And we'll say hello to you in the, um, in the oh. comments. So let's go for it. Everybody pick one, say hello to them, and we'll move on. Let's make it rapid. Go for it. Uh, Keith McIntosh, number one on the doors. Uh, you are spending four nights in your caravan at the house. Can we get a mention, please? Keith McIntosh, you got a That's mention. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, Clive Tucker, hi guys, hope you're well. Can you give us a mention? It's the first time in 11 years we haven't made it away at Easter. All the best, Clive and Jill. Excellent. Uh, we're just going to say a quick hello to Becky, mum on a mission. She's saying, evening, replying to say thanks for all the laughs. Take care, Becky. Um, wheels on wheels. I don't think I follow them. Hi guys, hope you're all well. Um... Where will the first place you go to after this is over? It's almost into the question. Well, we're, we're, we're not going to do that yet. We'll do that no. in a bit. <laughs> we've got, we've got, we have got some questions to go on We do, for, haven't we? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Indeed. Uh, rolling with the Robsons. Hi, Rolling with the Robsons. Uh, Caravanians. Uh, very good evening to you, Fred and Andrea. Looking forward to the next episode. We could all do with a lift right now. Certainly we could. Caravan pastimes, looking forward to watching and mention will be very much appreciated. Thanks. Hello, Caravan pastimes. If only we knew your name. <laughs> <laughs> your real name. <laughs> well, it's like the, the Caravan Nut, we know his name. Hello, Martin. We do. Uh, evening, do. chaps. Good evening to you, uh, uh, Caravan Nuts. Uh, we've got Canning's yes. Family Adventures as well. They've said, uh, could we get a mention, guys, please? Yes, you just did. Tony Marsh. Hey, guys, Tony here. Uh, caravans and campers yep hello reply well done there we go caravans and campers <laughs> and we got i got exactly the same one from rogue ts 50x there's a throwback to your teenage days andy if you know what a ts 50 is are you going to argue no. about how you pronounce it yeah um what has uh, everybody been up to buying getting or going to do next when they're in their van well we have just purchased the Avtex Tora 2 sat nav system. 
Ooh, Ooh. sat navs. Contentious issue, this. Sat navs. So, up until now, we have been using. Uh, actually, I've been tending to use the app Waze. Mm -hmm. um, I've tried or it. Google Waze. Maps. Yeah. Um, and find they work pretty well. The thing with the Bailey being eight foot wide, I, I do like to you know to plan ahead anyway and have a rough idea of where you want to go, even when you're using something like that. Uh, and the the thing is, we we always like to to plan our way anyway. But we thought you know something like this, it's got it comes with all of the official Caravan and Motorhome Club sites built in and CLs. Um, it's built in there as well. We, when we went to Spain, I downloaded a free app, or it was a 14-day free subscription period for a trucking app. Hmm. Um, I've forgotten the name of it, um, but it was crap. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it really was. And we were away for like 16 days. Um, so I didn't... I, I downloaded it, and it wasn't, it wasn't, we wasn't going to be able to use it on the way back. But to be honest, by the time I got to Portsmouth, I didn't, I didn't want to use it anyway. <laughs> That's really interesting. It didn't didn't seem to reroute you. In, I'll put all of the details of the vehicle in there, hmm. but it it didn't. Um, you know, it, I didn't think it did a very good job. Which, mm. you know, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful this will be better. <laughs> I remember when I got our one. Um, I was again. I was. Um, what's the best way to put it? I wasn't sure if it was going to work. Um, yeah. So I put in the dimensions of the, the caravan and uh, I went down a road that I knew was restricted width and mm -hmm. it went it went silly. It just went, no, you're on a restricted road, shouldn't be going down here um, and kept flashing up on the screen. So from there onwards, I was like, yeah, you know what? I'll trust this one with yeah, the, with the caravan. Yeah. So again, once, once you've got yours up and running, you're allowed out again, um, give it a try down a restricted road. It'll be interesting to know actually how it works for the CLs because we've only, well, we've only actually holidayed it one CL, um, and having gone through the you know the caravan and Angle book and all that sort of thing, quite often with CLs it tells you a uh, follow go this route, hmm. and you have to sort of know the the abbreviations, you know to 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 follow it correctly. But some of them have will say don't go this way, go that way. So it might be a good one to test out to see if it does route you the way that it says in the in the book. I don't know. It it might not, but it, I'll certainly try it. Mm. I um, you borrowed our um our our sat nav when you went to um, Disneyland France. Paris, didn't you? Yep. Yeah. Why did you borrow ours and not use your own? Because my um, my sat nav was thirty quid off eBay, and it's uh, it's an uh, I think it's called X Godi X Godi, and it's a truck sat nav, but it was thirty quid, and it's done us all right. To be fair, I'm I'm not going to knock it because it's it's not the easiest thing to use, so I will knock it in that respect, but it hasn't done us wrong getting us to where we need. However, from um, from home to Disneyland Paris is a lot further. So yeah. we, I spoke to you and said, Dan, can I borrow your sat nav? <laughs> and, it was, and, and that was the primary one that I used to get us there and add, and add my one on in the background. Um, but um, yeah, the, the TomCom, uh, Tom, the TomTom -tom, um, was, uh, yeah, faultless, got us there, no problem at all. So one thing I do like about the, so we have got the TomTom -tom Go Camper. Um, and and that was part of a uh, you know um, a promoted thing I did a few years ago, and people have asked me, would you still use it? Do you still use it? And I, my honest answer is yes. It's it's very very good. Um, mm. The one thing I, if I was to buy one though, if I was to go and purchase one, I would really look quite closely at that um, that Avtex Tour Two. Um, mm. It's based it's based upon and I might be wrong here, so Andy fill in the gaps. It's based upon the Garmin system, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, which is a name that everybody knows from sat navs, um, and it's yeah. specifically designed for people who are towing and touring with you know odd shaped outfits, weight limits, and you know and all of that. The Go Camper yeah. is very good, and you can put your dimensions in and your axle weights and what have you. But I'll be honest with you, we managed to get it confused when we were down the New Forest. Um, I took the wrong turning, and it took me down through a village in. Hampshire, which quite honestly I shouldn't have been taking a caravan down, but it allowed mm -hmm. me to carry on through, um, mm. and that was down to my own silly fault. So 
I think. Yeah, but that's the whole thing of a sat nav, isn't it? If you take a wrong turn, it should be alerting you to the fact that look, you need to. You're in a wrong place. You shouldn't yeah. be going down here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one of the one of the obvious questions that sort of throws up is to say, you know, why why would you have one? I mean, because most modern cars now have an inbuilt sat nav, mm. um, and and that is that is as up to date as the last time it was updated. Do you know mm. what I mean? So you know, if your service frequency and you're not going to a main dealership it's to get your services get done, mm. it's not going to get updated. Um, why can't in-car sat navs come ready to accept it if you have something plugged on the back of the car? Why hmm. can't your Why can't your car know it's got a caravan plugged onto it when you plug your electrics into it? Hmm. And why can't the sat nav then say, right, okay, you've got a caravan on the back or a trailer at least, hmm. Um, hmm. and before you set off, it's going to ask you what are your dimensions of your new outfit, please. Why hmm. Why can't the car be that intelligent to know that you are now towing? And use the inbuilt or, system in your car. Yeah, or with your with the modern cars, they are just a plug-in, aren't they? It's just a, a, a either a, a, an update from your dealer, or it's a it's a plug-in stick or whatever to, to update the maps. Why can't you say this is my tow vehicle, I tow, and I want the caravan yeah. map? Mm. Yeah, mm. I mean our car mm. hasn't been updated since two thousand and thirteen because I begrudge paying a hundred pounds for a DVD. And that's mm. basically all yeah. it is. Ours is a DVD-based system. Mm. I take the disc out, put new disc in, and it's got the new maps in it. I am not paying 100 quid. I know I can get hooky versions off of eBay, but my experience mm. of those have not been great, to be honest with you. Uh, they keep crashing and they don't work properly, so you have to go for a main dealer version. And mm. quite honestly, what, why am I going to spend 100 pounds on a DVD when I could essentially go and spend what John has done, spent a few quid on something off of eBay, which is ready to accept touring dimensions I mean, yeah yeah i mean it does don't get me wrong it, it does do the job and it hasn't done me wrong but it is not easy to use um it's not it really isn't and that's where the money goes and i can understand that i've looked at the well i've used your one dan and yeah. and it was so much easier to use yeah the um, ui yeah mm. so andy yeah. um how much did yours cost so the avtex tour 2 is 304.99 on the caravan and motorhome club shop um, to members, it's three hundred and thirty-two forty-nine. So that's a saving mm. of seventeen pound fifty, or five percent. So there you go. Okay. Well, seventeen quid is seventeen quid, isn't it? Well, it's what a third well, of your membership fee. Yeah, mm. exactly. Mm. Do you know yeah. what we should do, Andy? Uh, I've got the Tom Tom. You've got the uh, Altex. Uh, we should, if we ever see each other in flesh again, uh, <laughs> we, we should uh, meet up at the same campsite and go off for a drive yeah, um, a to, to another location. We're not necessarily with a car caravan, but pretend we've got a caravan. Um, yeah. Maybe we and should find, go from... a, find somewhere where there's a restricted road. Yeah, and yep. see what, what they both do. We'll see what hey, they both hey say. Man. Get the 30 quid ex Godi in there. <laughs> That's, do you know what? We should do that. Um, we should. That would probably be all right. Let's put that out to the public, uh, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. boys and girls who are listening. Do you think that'd be something worthwhile? All three of us start off in the same location, pretend we've got caravans, and go off somewhere. Hey, we could actually, just thinking about it, we could almost make a little bit of a, um, a, a fun and games out of it. We could say, right, somebody brings us a, a location we have to get to, and it's not a postcode, but it's a location. So how do you find that? Can you? Does your um, sat-nav have it already built in? Is it on a restricted road? So it's not just a matter of how easy can we also then input the details before we um, before we head off. Yeah. Well, what a bloody good idea! I, I think occasionally just, I come up with them. I think we've just come up with, come up with some new content there. That's good because to be honest, we were running out of things to say. <laughs> right. Oh. So what uh, next next item on the agenda? Uh, so Jono, what are you going to do? Uh, what, what's your task that you're going to do? You're going to you're going to clean your pipes. I am going to clean my pipes. Now, I, I was in the garage earlier having a clean out of the garage because it's, um, again, it's one of those little jobs that I haven't done for a while, what clean the garage. But, um, yeah, I found my very small bottle of PuraClean. Um, and I was thinking, I was like, this is a job I need to do as soon as isolation is over. I need to get to the caravan and I need to clean my pipes. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I, it, was, it was on my job list to do in February and didn't get round to it. Yeah, everyone, everyone's got those sort of springtime yeah. jobs Cleaning. and yeah. stuff like that. And uh, they've just been delayed 
<laughs> did I uh, okay. did I tell you we we cleaned our pipes out? We we did ours uh, whilst we were away in the caravan um, in February. Uh, I don't know if I've told you this story, but we had um, some really foul tasting water coming out of our our mm. taps. And so I said to Angela, I said, well, it's quite clearly we need to pure clean all our pipe work, you know, our tanks, what have you. We'll do it before we go home. So there I was. I started off, you know, as per um, a great instructional video, which is on YouTube on how to sterilize your pipes. Uh, no, pu Who's no, that? no plug. Who's that? Oh, I, I, I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. Some bloke and, you know, whatever. Um, and uh, and I started and I did it and I did it all properly and I did it great and I tasted the water and it was just disgusting. It was absolutely rancid. It was mm. the worst tasting thing I've ever had. And I couldn't work out what was going on. I just cleaned all the pipes, the hot water tank, everything was clean. What was mm. going on? And then I realised that we've got a mixer tap in our kitchen, mm -hmm. and for some reason our hot water tank just tastes gross, as you would probably expect, and the water I was drinking was coming straight out of the hot water tank until it ran clear with the cold ah. water. So what I was doing was I wasn't letting the water run because I was conserving as much fu fluid as possible. So we worked out that if we let the water like run a little bit through. to get it out the tap, then drink it, it's absolutely fine. Well, I th I'm sure you put me onto this and it was, it was because of Sarah's bad tasting tea that we, uh, we obviously we, we bought the van new and it was yep. it was only after the first year and we'd been away and it was Sarah kept saying oh my tea tastes fair, funny we thought it was the tea bags we changed that then we started taking our own water we thought it's the water on site the water wherever we are in the UK the water tastes different to what we get at home yeah and um, yeah no it, it, it was because the pipes were clear, dirty and um, yeah, I'm sure that was it, it was one from you, Dan, that you said oh, yeah. you need to clean your pipes. <laughs> Incidentally, I just used Pure Clean just the other day to clean the shower head because that's a that's a job you do when you're in lockdown, isn't it? You clean the shower head. Mm. I haven't cleaned my shower head yet. Oh, it's Pure but Clean. I've got a good idea for tomorrow now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sh shower head Pure Clean, brilliant. It gets all the little um, horrible bits out from in the all the bits Ooh. and bobs. Yeah, the thing, no. great thing with PuraClean is that it's so cheap as well. Yeah. Mm. It's like, yeah. I've just done a quick search and it's £2.50 online. It's, it's the cheapest. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely brilliant. £2.9, yeah. in fact, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, shall we move on to some user comments? Yes. Let's do it. Okay. Right, voiceover guy, hit us with your dulcet tones. It's time for some user comments. Swear jar at the ready, boys. Right, and here we are, everybody's favourite part of the uh, podcast, apparently. <laughs> it said nobody ever. Um, right, go on then, John, you start. User comments. Um, right, I have got a couple lined up, and the first one is from Chris Elliott, um, Gixer 750pilot. Uh, ideas for the next chat. Uh, no, what? no, 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 John. No. We're not, no, John. What? It's not... Andy, yeah. set, the boy, set the boy right. It's not, no, don't start. Andy, you're wrong. It's Gixer. G -g 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 Gixer. No, no. Oh, now, uh, no, just for everybody else, if you've not seen the comments from the last video, go on to YouTube, have a look in the comments. There's been a whole argument about how you say Gixer. Now, I, so if, you, if you're not a motorcyclist, then it's a, a Suzuki GSXR Gixer. It's Gixer. And you even said you just said it then yourself. It's GS. It's Jizz. No, G, 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 G for golf. G. Did I just say Jizz on the podcast? I did, didn't I? I just said Jizz on the podcast. Come on, carry on, carry on. Come on, carry on. Gixer 750 pilot, Andy. Morley. Morley. Ideas for the next chat. What would you do with a grand in the hand? Now, I'm going to. He's then put ATC, motor mover, what else? Now, I know. Um, that, that Chris has actually bought a motor mover and his caravan is in lockdown, it's at storage and he's got this nice shiny new pair of motor movers that he can't fit to his caravan got yet. Got so if you had a grand in your hand, what would you buy, Andy? Hmm. Well, I've just spent 350 quid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what would I spend the rest on? Um, do you know something I'm... Might be. Uh, 
you know, I, I don't know the price, but one thing I am tempted with is the iNet system, the Truma iNet mm. system for, you know, allowing you to control the caravan by an app. Dan's got that, hasn't he? <clears throat> he has. It is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Unbelievable! You think to yourself, "Oh, that's just another gimmick. That's nothing another toy." No, nothing can be further from the truth. I, re- I remember we use it, it when were we all the time. Where were we? Were we Sirencester last yeah. year? And yeah. it was November. It was bloody cold. We're in Sirencester. We're in a pub. Pub. And I'm that's saying, right. and I said to Dan, I said, "We're going to have to get back soon. I need to turn the heating up." He's like, "Oh, hang on a second. <laughs> I'll just do mine now." <laughs> what? <laughs> and what temperature do you want? <laughs> Why do I sound like a... I don't sound like that. Or you do. Or Ange, Marlene. Or Ange, what temperature do you want? But no, it was. It, it was, looks really, really impressive. It's brilliant. The best thing is because we've got a fixed bed and our bed is way at the back, because it's slightly different temperature at the back of the caravan to the front of the caravan, if it's too hot or if it's too cold, I can adjust the temperature whilst led in bed with my phone. So you don't have to get up, walk three feet. <laughs> walk three feet, yeah, yeah. Come on, I'm on holiday. <laughs> uh, it's brilliant. The best thing about it is in the winter times, because um, we call our caravan Rupert, Rupert will t- send me a text message to say I'm cold. Um, and because I set warnings on it uh, when it gets to, uh, you know, freezing point, mm. and then I can then make sure I'm aware it's cold and I can make sure uh, that. Um, you can take you a know, blanket and tuck him in. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Go and cuddle him in the morning. Yeah, so the great thing is, it um, you can obviously set alarms up and alerts up onto it to say that when it's cold or when it's hot, do things. Mm. But of course, also we've got the air conditioning. So when I'm away, I can make sure, when we're away from the, the caravan for a day, I can make sure that the temperature is just so. And that's really important for when we've got the cat in the caravan. I want to make yeah. sure that we're not obviously mm. converting the cat into a boiled pet. Um, <laughs> and I can make sure that if it's getting too hot in there, I can turn the AC up. If it's getting too cold, I can turn it down. So I can control yeah. it all from my phone. And it's <clears throat> brilliant. Can you retrofit it? So like, ours, yeah. I think our, yeah, yeah. our panel says yeah. iNet ready, yeah. but we don't have iNet. I've got yeah. a video, literally I filmed it uh, when we bought the caravan. I filmed it, I have never released it. Um, uh, and I've got a full video on how to install it, how to use it, how to set oh. it up. I've got a full-blown video. I've never released it um, because the timing was, has never been right because I've always had yeah. more important things. But it's, it's scheduled, and it's actually listed here, is one of my next seven videos that I have recorded ready for oh, right. release. So that will be coming out on our channel very soon. Uh, if you're going to get one, I recommend you get the level control as well, which is the Bluetooth plate which fits onto your... Uh, gas bottles it fits on the bottom of your gas bottles that talks to inet and you can see from your phone uh how much gas you've got oh great that's so better can... than that beepy thing oh it's, it's brilliant because <laughs> Although the beepy see... thing is good yeah, yeah yeah so you can see uh how hot your caravan is how much uh, gas you have in your caravan what the charge of the battery is um and you can it's brilliant and when you get on uh, an inet system you get sorry on when you get on a truma system you get an error message which comes up on the panel and it's like E512H or what have you. That is the exact code, isn't it? You, you don't know what that <laughs> is. When it texts you, because it will text you to say there's an error, oh, yeah. it will not only tell you the error message, but it will give you a plain English description of what that error actually is. Uh, yeah, because normally you have to go on Google, put in the error code, go to the Truma site, download a PDF, scroll You've through the it. whole PDF, yep. Yep. just to find that it's a... Uh, you run, run out of gas. You run out of gas. <laughs> which, is, which is that error, I think, isn't it? Yeah, I think you're right. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so, that, Dan, what would, you, um, what would you spend? Do you know what? I don't know, because I've got pretty much everything I want in or on the van. I, I, I often ask myself, would I want a satellite system, a dome Ooh. or something on the top of the caravan? Yeah. But do you know what? I just can't justify it the cost mm. the weight and the, the it, it, i just can't justify it because i think well we don't watch a lot yeah, of tv th- mm. you know what i think though it appeals to different people depending on how they use their caravan mm. you know if if you're just going away for you know short breaks and you know even even once every six weeks or once a month or whatever but if you're going away for like four or five weeks at a time or you live in your caravan then maybe those extra home creature I, comforts I, I could probably see the advantage of a satellite system if I was on the continent. I think 
being abroad, being in France or Spain, I think the satellite system would make more sense because I think you can pick up British mm. terrestrial mm. Uh, whilst you're abroad. So I could see that, but having a sat dome on the roof with a Sky Q subscription, a dual LNB jobby that you can record and watch at the same time, come on. It kind of gets away from what a lot of us, I think, the want to escape is, yeah. from, really, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah so it and the next step would be a home cinema system with a you know a five point yeah. one Dolby Atmos system installed mm. in the van with laser disc and <laughs> projector. Mm, now there's an idea. <laughs> you, can't, you can't do that, John. You haven't got the beard. Sorry. <laughs> so next question, Nicola Roberts asks: Do oh, yeah. you have any advice about towing a caravan in high winds? We went away a couple of weeks ago, just overnight, to try out our new caravan, and then it was really windy travelling home. This is the first podcast that I've watched. Brilliant fun, interspersed with some very good advice and information. Great view and looking forward to the next episode. It was scary. Now that is quite unfortunate because if that's your first caravan, as she alludes to, uh, yeah, try it and new caravan. So I don't really know if they're new to caravanning or not. But if you were an absolute newbie and your first trip out was a mm. windy, ex you know, was a, a windy tow, I can see how that might put you yeah. off quite quickly <laughs> sorry i can't stop laughing at your windy toe <laughs> <laughs> if your first you come up with some crackers Andy. <laughs> <laughs> if your first experience was high wind <laughs> oh, sorry um... <laughs> it can be quite unpleasant well we touched upon this in the last episode didn't we about confidence we mm. Um, mm. and when i towed in high winds my my confidence was That's locked amazing. it was it mm. was horrendous um mm. no i think the advice that you gave in the last episode which was uh, do a touring holiday you, you know stay somewhere move on stay somewhere move on stay somewhere mm. move on get to understand the dynamics of your outfit um and if it feels a bit shaky look again the way you're loading your caravan yeah. because yeah, that's I think the most that's crucial thing absolutely because it, it you know it, it might be in that particular instance that towing incident that it was high wind that was the problem but you know you could go away again and you could get caught in a rut on a motorway you know where hgvs have worn gotcha. the road down mm. and that can have a you know a similar instability effect for one of a better phrase yeah so the loading side of things of course high wind slow down mm -hmm. go a bit slower you know you're better to arrive safe than sorry aren't you it's a cliche mm. but just slow down, you know, and I'm sure they probably would have done. Um, just to uh, add another thing into the mix, if it was a new caravan, maybe it's not loaded up with all the possessions that they wanted. And I'm sure you two boys have got experiences of towing an empty caravan. Yeah. I, oh. I certainly can remember towing yeah. both empty caravans. Well, it was they did say shocking. that. Yeah, they did say they've been away for the night. So they would have had, you know, the kitchen cutlery. They might not. They might have had a takeaway or gone out to a pub or something. But, you know. Mm. Uh, it's it's oh, a tricky one. God, can you remember that? Going to the pub? <laughs> All right, we've got one here from Martin Burr. Hi, folks. Just wondering about levelling caravans using ramps. I know that you should always pull the van onto the ramp so that the handbrake works correctly. I suppose, however, this doesn't apply if you're using a motor mover to drive the van up the ramp from either direction or reversing. Disengaging mechanism won't come into play. Thoughts? Right, uh, I can give you some experience here because, uh, and I don't know if it's indicative of other people, but this is our experience. When we put the caravan up onto a ramp using the motor mover, it doesn't matter whether we drive it forward or put it backwards, we find that the caravan will want to swing, want to yeah. move in some direction when you start to disengage the motor movers. So what we do is, regardless of whether it's reversed up or driven up, what we do is we chalk both wheels. So we chock it on the ramp, we chock it on the opposite side as well, put the handbrake on, and then as it's disengaging, I rock the caravan just ever so slightly backwards and forwards to bring the handbrake up a notch, mm. just to engage it a little bit further. And that, I find, stops the caravan swinging when, it, uh, when you disengage your motor movers from putting it on with a motor mover. Uh, that's our experience, and that has been our experience with both the Luna, that was a manual engage and disengage, and with the... Uh, Bailey, which is an automatic engage and disengage, that no matter which one it is, as soon as you start to release the pressure on the mm -hmm. lifted side, the caravan will want to swing. And it's an absolute pain in the backside when you've leveled it up, you've got it just in the right place for the wheel receiver on the opposite side, the caravan swings and it takes it by about a gnat's hair <laughs> difference away from it and you can't get your 
bloody Alco wheel lock on. Yeah, it's it's ironic really. We I remember when we first started out at Caron, we bought the uh, I think they're Milenko levelers, a uh, twin pack, and thought I'm, we're definitely going to need this. I don't think I used them for the first nine, ten months or something like that because the majority <laughs> of sites are actually pretty good. However, mm. at, at Christmas when we were away, um, it was the first time we actually had to use the leveling blocks, and the first time we're using it with a twin axle, and that was an experience because you have to drive it. Drive it over the first ramp, i.e. the back one, um, to the, to then raise it up. But the same thing happens really with the twin axles. The single, whenever you want to release that, you know, release that motor mover, he wants to swing. But we we chock. We, yeah. We've really noticed it because when storage in the storage, we're on quite a, an incline, and mm. that's fine if I was just leaving it in storage. Of course, I use the caravan to record films in, and it's quite unpleasant to sit in a caravan or use a caravan, which is on a, quite a quite a piss, you know, to the side. Um, so I try to level it as much as I can, and mm. it, yeah, it can be quite it can be quite emotional. So I guess the well, the question was, do you drive on forwards or backwards? I mean, my I always, my my intention would be to go forwards onto the ramps. Yeah, I always go forward onto the ramps. Mm. Also, because yeah. if you go backwards. I don't know about yours, but with mine, the um, the mudguard fouls on the ramps as you go backwards. So I always go forward anyway. I reverse mine onto the ramps then. Yeah, I was just thinking about it when you were saying. So anyway, I think that's enough from us. Uh, we've been going on, we've been talking way too much about nothing in particular. And <laughs> it's been really good, actually. It's been lovely having a chat with you two boys. It has been, mm. uh, it's lifted my mood here this weekend. So uh, thank Definitely. you very much for your, your company. Um, we're going to hand over now to the vlogger's wives uh, for our audio only bit um, and that's going to be Kelly from the Holland Breeze and they've been putting out some great content on their channel just recently. Uh, we've got Mrs Morley and we've got Mrs T as well and they're going to be doing an audio only bit and they've got a few things that they want to talk about and I know that's going to be quite funny. Uh, I've been told I need to leave the room while she talks about me behind my back. <laughs> So there we go. So that's what's coming up next. Many thanks for watching and listening, everybody. Uh, we'll be back again in episode six. If you've got any comments for our next episode, well, put them in the description of this one on our YouTube channel. We'll read them out in the next time. So uh, many thanks, everybody. Bye for now. Stay safe. Stay at home. Stay at home. Stay at home. Stay safe. The Caravan Coffee and Cake Podcast has been a Crocs and Socks production. Hosted by John Feeney, Andy Morley, and Dan Trudgeon. This podcast is available via iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, and TuneIn with the video version on YouTube. For more information about this podcast or the hosts, click on the notes for this episode. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.